Hey, nerdlings! What up, nerdlings? Do you nerd for conventions and gaming and gaming conventions? On the road, be roll because it's a brand new cone to do a video for. <laughs> and if not, I'll just delete this. We have a fun little local convention simply called the game which stands for gaming arts media and entertainment we happen to be able to join them for their 11th year they hooked us up with some press passes which was ridiculously nice of them yes it was. so i want to give a shout out thank you guys so much for uh getting us in there so that we can experience this and now it is our turn to talk about what a great time we had and show off some of the great things we got First of all, we didn't even get through the main we doors. Didn't. What did we get? We got goodie bags. <laughs> Look at that for Halloween. Orange and black. That's great. So uh, we haven't even peeked inside here. So let's see what's inside our goodie bags. I found a button and it's the come play game button. Now we each did get yes. the nice little booklet that has, of course, the map right there right in the middle super duper easy to find it's got your panels and performers schedule of course and all of the information for everyone that helped to make game possible and in the back you have a page called my games you use this page to write down date and time of games you played in and it reminds me of uh, the old nes manuals with the notes in the mm -hmm. back i do love the cover because it kind of reminds me of our business cards where you've got just a plethora of all the nerdiness nice yeah <laughs> yeah get all the fandoms in there There's business cards of the various people that were at the show. Including business cards that may have discounts, like a 10% mm -hmm. off here. One of the people that we got to meet at Vision Con, uh, Dungeon Crafters, and they included a little tiny barrel. So that's awesome because I have been buying miniatures from them. And that'll go perfectly in my little miniature blacksmith shop. And, of course, on the back, look at that 10% off for purchase. And uh, I think you'll be able to put that to good use. Look at that little barrel. Those are cute. What do you think's in the barrel? Bananas. Bananas? Was this Donkey Kong's barrel? And there's also a $25 off your photo purchase at JCPenney's Portraits. Now this is neat, and this is a worldwide organization dedicated to medieval and fantasy combat, sports, and recreation. They use padded weapons, fantasy, and authentic clothing, and imagination to immerse players in a world of heroic combat, quests, crafts, and more. And then real quick, one of the business cards happened to be a sticker. Hell hath no fury like a healer scorned. Oh, I noticed that healer was a redhead. As soon as we walked in, right to the left of the entrance, were some art vendors. Mm -hmm. And uh, initially, we were drawn to the prints. There were we some were, really yeah. great prints. But you happened to find something even I better. I did. I love earrings and dangly earrings. And these cute little thingies caught my eye. And uh, since it was recently our anniversary, he actually picked out a pair for me that he really liked. I loved these too. Little... Little cute little Metroids. I had to go with the Metroids. First of all, I love that they have this, um, like the clear plastic mm -hmm. or acrylic that they use. And the Metroids look great. Being able to see through them, they're perfect. And then the ones that caught my eye specifically were some Spyro. And I loved him because on one side, he's just looking his cute little Spyro self. 
But when you flip him over, he's got sunglasses on. And that's just, that is just really adorably cute. I don't know, there's something cute about Spyro wearing some sunglasses. The next table that caught our eye was called the Lumbering Dragon, and they had a nice variety of stuff. They really did. A lot of nerd, like, everything nerdy. Yes. First of all, they had coasters, which, ironically enough, coasters are such an easy craft to do because there's all kinds of yes. varieties of coasters. Cork yes. coasters. Yes, so they absorb that water. And let's face it, we all have parties, we all get together with our friends, and you don't want rings on your table. Come on! I do, I do the engraving part with my laser engraver, and that's how we make these boxes as well. These are laser cut and uh, put together. It's my design, and we can customize them. He said that he left this like a sticky on the back, like a sticky sticker, so you could stick them to stuff if you didn't want to use them as a coaster or stick that to it, something else as a coaster. Of course the thing that really caught your eye was the total love for Harry Potter uh -huh. fandom there. Yes, they had a bunch of different wands, they had three different levels of wands, and it was totally random. What they did was they had cards on the table of different wizards and um, whatever level you were going for, he picked up the cards in front of that one, mixed them all up, threw them in a bag, and then you reached in and you pulled out a card, and that's the one you got. And so the wand chooses you, so that was really cool. So I went for the premium one. I'm gonna pick out a, or well, I'm not gonna pick out a wand. The wand is gonna pick me out. Are you excited? Are you I excited? am, I am excited. All right. And let the magic happen. Pick a card that feels really good. Not that one. Not that one, one. Not that that one, one no, that one. Maybe this one. Maybe that one. Maybe this one. Alright. What have you got there? Cho Chang's card. So I got Cho Chang's wand. I like the card. You can, you can keep the card. Oh good, I get to keep the card. <laughs> <laughs> ticket. I got on the train. I have to stay at the station. I didn't get a ticket. <laughs> Here is your Oh, wand. she has a pretty wand. That's really pretty. Oh, nice. It's got a good heft to it, too. It's got a steel core in it. It's resin poured over the steel. You also get the... And so here is Miss Chang's wand. And I actually... I really like her wand. It's really pretty. The problem with Harry Potter is everyone had a wand in the movies, but you never got to see them. They never really highlighted them. So I love getting to see them after the fact and getting to really see the detail in it and everything. And it's just, you know, swish and flick. But it's really a nice wand. I like her wand. Actually, yeah, I have to admit, that metal core in there, this is the first time I'm, I'm feeling this wand, it really helps it to not feel cheap. Now, I mean, don't try to just snap it or anything. Don't throw it at your little brother. But it doesn't feel like it's just going to snap if yeah. you're, you know, waving it around or anything. And I agree with you. It's a gorgeous wand. There's something about that simplistic design to some of the it's wands. It's elegant, yeah. And it does come in a nice velvet-lined little box here. And you also get to pick a bottle opener. Oh, okay. I think I like the Here for the Butterbeer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. There you go. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Well, thank you. That was fun. <laughs> and then I got a treble. I just, I love it. Or he did say he said they could be a pygmy puff, puff, whichever way you lean. But which whichever fandom you want. But to. I'm leaning toward treble because the pygmy puffs do have eyes and noses and mouths, and trebles don't. So to me, this looks more like a treble. And they were all handmade. The trebles were handmade and uh, laser engraved these. So that's really nice. I thought that was really neat. They did a nice mixture of handmade items versus and purchased items. What's up, Robert? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Ah!
just as we were coming around the corner, right there at the end, was a table that had all manner of dragon themed stuff. Solid dragon eggs. They hadn't hatched yet. Little dragon eggs. Dragon eggs. They did. That were open and they were painted gold on the inside and they said that tea lights work. They had some really cute jewelry, some really neat uh, bracelets that had ones that caught my eye, especially they were gummy bears and uh, Tetris pieces. But then he also had some charms also that they had made. They had some fun dragon egg soaps that had a surprise in them. Inside it comes with a D20 that you can just pick out of there. Uh, each of these is an individual hand soap. Uh, once the soap is used, there is a different polyhedral in there. It could be a D4, D10, D6. But once you use all the soaps, you wind up with a seven die set. They were really cr all around crafty. But the one thing that caught my eye the most that we did leave with is, y'all know I love my dragons, and I couldn't leave without adopting a dragon and becoming a new dragon they, owner. Look at that, they even give you a guide. And a little birth certificate for your new baby dragon. And I shall now show you. Here is my new baby dragon that I adopted. That is adorable. Isn't it so, so cute and adorable? I just love him. He's right now one of my favorite color schemes, which is like a bluey, teal, turquoisey, and orange. I just love those colors together. and. He just, he caught my eye immediately. There were other ones that I was kind of looking at. I was like, oh, those are cute. Those are cute. But nope, this was my dragon. The neat thing is, is they did um, name him on the birth certificate. What they kind of thought his name would be Crystal. They So they said this certifies Crystal and then I can fill it out. Or they said, if you want to rename them, they give you a blank birth certificate, which I thought was kind of neat. And these were all available from Self Made Nerd. So please check the description for links and see what they have. This is kind of funny. Uh, feeding instructions. These little dragons don't like to be watched while eating. So that'll be good to know. I won't, I won't watch them while I'm eating. Where you going, Robin Hood? Into the next aisle, we were seeing some fun friends from past conventions. We saw a fantastic artist that we happened to commission a couple of unique pieces for some friends of ours in the past. And we also got to visit with Library Con. We did. We had a lot of fun talking to Library Con. Hey, so come see Library Con at the Library Center in August. It'll be our sixth annual event, and it's super awesome. I picked up a couple of... Uh, extra bookmarks because you can never have no. too many bookmarks. Something, Don't dog ear those pages that hurts the book. Something I like to do honestly is whenever I read a book I leave the bookmark I used in the book because if I ever come back to it it's like a little piece of history mm -hmm. and it always encourages you to use new bookmarks and these were great because these were part of a design a bookmark contest and uh, you've got bookman right here and uh, this read to succeed is fantastic. I, I mean like look at man. this little red-headed oh, wizard. Oh that's nice. Plus, we always love to talk to people from the Library Center, especially about things like Library Con, because we always have so much fun, we always look forward to it, and we already can't wait for next year. Oh, so can't wait. Aside from all of the vendors, something that I was really enjoying about game was seeing all of the booths set up for upcoming conventions, because going to one convention is often a great way to learn yep. about other conventions, Ren fairs other events that are happening or about to happen. Case in point being Vision Con. Now, of course, we're not going to forget. Vision oh, Con's no. always around uh -uh. the corner. You have access to anything on the table. Anything on the table? Anything on the table. <laughs> uh... But it is a great way to get to know a little bit about Vision Con when they have everything set up there and someone to talk to and tell you, hey, you need to come to this because it's got all of the nerdy things there. We'll go for a fan. Keep cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's how we found out about the Toy Man show up in St. Louis. So it was a great way to find out about conventions. And it's a great way to stay in shape. And speaking of all of the artists on hand and authors, one of our newfound favorites just happened to be... Zombie Dave!
And he had gifts he for us. He did. He gave us first edition of Zombie 1 and 2. And he said that there was only two of these left. And he's got one and now we've got one. It's I like, know. you do not have to do that. I mean, l let's face it. They're in a good forever home yes, now. Yes, they are. But that was so awesome, and we cannot thank you enough for that. The other thing that he gave us was one of these little Zombie Dave collector comics, and it just kind of highlights some things and has a little Zombie Dave inside. It's always fun to get uh, the extra little bits like this because you want to know more about Stone Pie Media. In fact, he told us, Zombie Dave, the end is near. I but know. He's already got some ideas yes, for the future. Yes, excited about. And then he also gave us some other really fun little thingies here. He gave us some cards. Woo, holy cow. First of all, these are nice, nice cards. I mean, they have like a good thickness to them. They're, you know, they don't feel like cards that are just going to immediately warp and bend. And you've got some of the all-stars from Zombie Dave. Zombie Dave himself, of course. But uh, Will Bishop with that dark dead face, it always cracks me up. <laughs> Cliff Storm, this guy is fantastic. And how can you not love Major Fabulous? Yep, and then on the back it gives you a little bit of history on the character, so that's always fun. And then the last thing that he gave us, which was super cool, were some of the, they play a card game in the Zombie Dave, and so these are the cards from the card game they play. How cool is that? I know, so it's like we've got Got like a little piece of the of the comic in real life and how can you not love this stuff because look at these great parody pieces like the capuchin archer or neptune cornelius and psycho banana medieval monkey butt <laughs> and seriously, one of the characters that I legitimately think helped sell us on. Oh, yeah. Let's it's check this comic out. The main out. reason I wanted to. Thor o'clock sock monkey. Yeah. I, I kind of want a plushie of that. <laughs> I actually was getting ready to suggest that to him. He needs to find someone who makes plushies and make a Thor o'clock. <laughs> BK, if you're watching this, just saying. <laughs> Again, so many, so many amazingly crafty vendors. I tell you, if you're looking for anything from uh, art prints to crocheted items mm -hmm. or things that look like they were cast in resin, especially like steampunk stuff. Yeah. I mean, there was no shortage of stuff to find here. Jumping back to the whole art print thing, we found a fun little booth, and this artist had so many great things. And how can you resist a name like Toasted Parmesan? <laughs> now uh, she had some some nice sized prints of these, but we went with the sticker route because I believe we plan to put them on some magnets. Mm -hmm. Yes. We got a fun little. Bulbasaur. I believe this was the one That's that my first favorite. caught our eye and yes. sold us. I mean, he's got the pumpkin on his back, but then the hockey mask. Yes. Oh, come on. And then you've got Squirtle with like a skull mask on. And then Charmander, who has got like a little pumpkin in his hand, but his eyes are like extra flamey and everything like that. And look at this little... You know, it's kind of like a Frankenstein monster, but then like a patchwork Pikachu, yes, and it's so cute. I mean, he's he's so happy. They're all so happy. Well, Why maybe not Bulbasaur. Next door to Toasted Parmesan was the booth for Branson Con. Yet again, another upcoming convention there to give you some information and make you come to them. They also had a Plinko game set up and it had a fun little theme. So the idea was that <laughs> you were trying to land the very cool looking poker chips into I should one, have stolen one of the poker chips for at least something. <laughs> into one of the Infinity Stone slots. Oh, 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 oh! What does that mean? That's a go again. 
with the exception of the Soul Stone. Nope, 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 no doubles. The Soul Stone made you lose the game. You lost everything. Yeah, you can get this one. You win one of the mystery bags. Oh, a mystery bag. Huh? The poor lady Lacey here. She lost that game. Three times. <laughs> what did it cost? Everything. Everything. I know. Good vibes, good vibes, good vibes. Three times. Three times. And we did hang out uh -huh. and watch another guy win it. He won the grand prize one. <laughs> so and it wasn't fixed. See? <laughs> Not fair. <laughs> The other thing is, is a couple of times, if you landed it in the time stone, you got to go again. Now if you hit this one, you win one of the mystery bags. That's what you said last time, and I went to the soul stone. And I kept telling him I didn't want to go again. I would get in the time stone, and I'd say, I don't want to go again. But he'd say, you have to. Oh, seriously? <laughs> and then it would fall into the time, the soul stone. So I lost. Three times. Fortunately, next to them was a booth with some fun stuff for sale, including uh, I bought a toy this time around. I know, he actually bought the action figure and I didn't. So I got a figure of Cammy. I kept going back and forth. I was like, you know, I don't really do the toy thing as much as she me. And this, I did point out she's a video game character, so it works in the video game room. This probably isn't my favorite outfit of hers, but it's not that often that I come across Cammy. She's got some decent movement in her, and of course she's got her long ponytails in the back, and that little flyaway <laughs> <laughs> bit of hair up front with her little bow tie. You said that she yeah, kind I was of looked say, like from like here up, she looks like a flight attendant because she's <laughs> got like that little hat that they wear and like you know little you know suit jacket and a little tie on, but then like here down, that's not really flight attendanty. <laughs> And then we picked up a movie. We did pick up a movie. Like I said, it was our anniversary very recently, our ninth anniversary. And one of the traditional gifts for our ninth anniversary is Willow. So, so we got Willow. We got Willow. <laughs> uh, it might not be the Willow they were talking about. And who doesn't love Willow? I have your baby. Out of the way, Peck. <laughs> As you got out of the vendor area, there was a nice long table set up and behind them were a bunch of tabletop games. Now this is where you would rent or borrow the yeah. tabletop games. Which and, is a clever idea. Oh yeah, because uh, it's the perfect way to be able to play some of those games and figure out if it's something that you want to go and buy. And of course there were plenty of tables set up just for gaming. Mm -hmm. And there were lots of people taking advantage of this and a lot of those people were really getting into the game. Oh, yeah. Now I have to censor. <laughs> yeah. So he has a plan. Yeah, I mean, you only have this whole map to search because it's east. <laughs> That's my... I tried to tell you where it was. <laughs> no one Go west, me. young man. Go west. <laughs> Can I circumnavigate the globe at least? And not only were they playing board games, but there was a lot of tables set up playing D&D. &D. And some of them were, you know, just having fun with just their sheets in front of them. Some of them went all out and had, you know, boards and they had buildings and they had all kinds of stuff. They were even dressed as their characters. So, I mean, there was a lot of fun. There was a lot of D&D &D to be had. If anybody knows 
knows that they're the strong That is actually the constellation Cassiopeia. This, the reason why it's a uh, uh, shooting star in nature, that is actually the uh, that is actually the Hades Comet. <laughs> I like cheeks. I like and let's face it, whenever you go to these conventions, that's exactly what you want, is to be surrounded by those like-minded people mm -hmm. who have the same interests as you, so that you can really get full into that element that you love so much. Well, this is called Game, and they did not leave out video games. Nope. Along the back wall was a great area set up. Lots of TVs and flat screens, yes. and lots of systems on hand Just to about play. everyone you could think of. Constantly saw people getting some Tekken time in, getting some Soul Calibur time Smash in. Smash Brothers. Smash, of course. Some Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. And they had a nice little library of games right there mm -hmm. for people to try out on the various systems. They even had PlayStation VR to play. They did, which is very cool because not everyone has jumped on the VR boat, which they should. If, I know. If I may. If they're going to be anything like us, the minute they try it, they're going to run out and buy it. <laughs> They had some cool stuff that you might not otherwise get a chance to play, unless of course you're Chris from Telesplash Gaming. <laughs> but they did have the Steel Battalion controller on. That hand. was intense. They even had an area set up with a bunch of the mini classic consoles. I know, it was so cute and so perfect for a gaming convention. Oh yeah, because now you don't have to keep track of a bunch of physical games no. for the NES and Super Nintendo. You can have them just right there and people can jump in, play some of their old favorites. Yep. You can grab some foam weapons and go at it. Some of them made me a little worried. They were uh, they were beating those those foam shields with their foam swords a little hard. <laughs> they had grievances. They did. <laughs> but you could definitely see that everyone was having a lot of fun there. It was a little fun too because they have a rule like if you get hit in the arm, you've lost your arm, so it has to go behind you and. It's, it was kind of funny to see some of them on their knees on the floor because they'd lost an arm and both legs and all they had left was either, they had to decide, is this going to be a, a shield arm or a sword arm? <laughs> so it's kind of funny to see like people walking around on their knees because they lost their legs. Tis but a scratch. <laughs> Tis but a scratch. A scratch? Jumping back into some vendor booths that were set up just outside of the tabletop gaming area, one that we absolutely had to stop at was Dungeon Craft. Now, it looked like she had everything set up, some new pieces. She did, some pieces I was drooling over a little bit there. She had some new uh, cottages that she's starting to make, and I told her I cannot wait for her to get those on Etsy because I may have to add a cottage to my blacksmith shop. 
And it was also kind of cool because she had her 3D printer set up, so you could actually watch them print some stuff. Oh, yeah. Another new to us booth of uh, crafty vendors was Hedgecrafts. Yes, they were really cool. They had some really neat uh, crocheted dice bags, and they had ones that were very clever. There was a beholder one that his mouth unzipped, and you could put dice or other little things in. And then they had a Cthulhu. And one of my favorite pieces was a like treasure box that was a, like a monster treasure box and he had a tongue and everything and it was really cool. One, or should I say two, of the guests of honors A <laughs> were uh, Jennifer Ellis and Keith Baker of Together Studios. Now, Keith is actually an award-winning designer known for Gloom and the Eberron campaign setting for Dungeons & Dragons. With Jennifer Ellis, Together Studios has put out Phoenix Dawn Command, which is a role-playing game where death is how your character improves. And Illimat has the feel of a classic card game plucked out of time. It's uh, both familiar and unlike anything you've played before. But what she was much more interested in... Yes, I in, was, and I will probably be picking it up pretty soon, is called Action Cats. They have two different versions. There's Action Cats and Action Pups. And it was a Kickstarter game that they did where anybody who backed it got to submit the pictures of their cats for the action cats oh. and their dogs for the action dogs and had we known about this we would have submitted our lovely beauties so action cats is a storytelling game where people are competing to reveal the secret life story of a cat okay and it's very simple it's a little like you know sort of cards against humanity with a little more storytelling and a lot more cats okay so you have 170 adorable cat pictures one of the things we like to say is if the internet ever collapses, you know, this will be money. Um, <laughs> That's probably true. And uh, whoever is the current judge gives the cat a name. So what would you name that cat? Paul. So this is Paul. The rest of us all take a look at Paul, and then we have, uh, and I hope it's Paul with a P-A-W-L. It can be. Uh, and then we all have a hand of cards, and we come up with a... Uh, a story that we feel is gonna fit with Paul. So, all right. Someone might start off and say, the thing about Paul is Paul has terrible luck. He takes a lot of chances and, uh, you know, he's just always trying to get to the cookie jar on top of the refrigerator or, you know, find the tuna. And I'm just saying, he has used eight of his nine lives and you think he would be taking things a little careful, but you, you can see it in his eyes. Paul, he is just rolling the dice and one last crazy gamble. He's like, this time, this time it's going to work. On the other hand, I can say the thing about Paul, Paul looks sweet, but the FBI is investigating him for a series of bank robberies. And they're like, don't buy it. He is a ruthless criminal mastermind. But the fact of the matter is, he didn't rob those banks because he just wants to buy stuff for you because he loves you. And then you would say, well, which of these is he criminal mastermind or crazy gambler? See, I would say he is a criminal mastermind. And so then that player would get Paul and the judge would pass the left and we would do it all again. So it's just a, basically an excuse to tell crazy stories about cats. So what you can see is each card has the beginning of a story and the end of a story. Okay. The other point is that we encourage you, you can just put these cards down and read them straight off. What we encourage is that you build on the story. So the card just says he's being investigated by the FBI. 
I added the bank robbery back. So right. I'm like, well, why is he under investigation by the FBI? So it's always up to you to add as much detail as you okay. want. This is a place to start. So these are all hard-working real cats from out in the world. They aren't just models or anything like that. That's I a real wizard cat. I'm just saying. Well, maybe he's not a real wizard cat, but he might be. Of course, you want the game already. I do want the game already because but, the pictures are adorable. Yeah, I was going to say, I, <laughs> I think you probably wouldn't even need to play it. You would just sit there and flip through all the cards. So it would appear that the Invisible Man is wearing Robin's outfit today. That's lovely. The other guest of honor. <laughs> Look, if you know anything about Dungeons and Dragons, dungeon mastering, storytelling, you are probably more than familiar with Satine Phoenix. Satine is an amazing storyteller. She's very helpful. She's very informative. She loves to help you try to write your stories out and everything. I first learned about her from uh, Will Wheaton's Tabletop, and so I got to watch her play a game with them on there. We got to sit on on a panel and then we also got a lovely autograph from Miss Satine and she said to Tom and Lacey, thank you for playing with me today and then signed it. I would like to reiterate just how friendly she was and how oh, yeah. encouraging she was. There was a, uh, a young boy there and she was so nice to him and encouraging him to keep working on the story that he had for the character he was cosplaying as. Oh yeah. And I always love when people like her just take the time to really push and encourage people to follow through especially at that young age because you can you can shut it down so easily and to encourage it at that young age will just keep them going and going and it's just awesome game was a lot of fun first of all it's so great to be able to be around the people oh, that yeah. love the things that you do and then to be able to interact with them whether you're playing the video games or especially if you're getting to sit down and try out some tabletop games with them. It's just so great, that community coming together. And speaking of community, honestly, we had a lot of fun going around and talking to people that we have begun to get to know at conventions. You know, those con friends. You start oh, yeah. forming those tight bonds, and it's just so much fun. It's like, hey, I see you. What's going on? You know, and you catch up on everything. And you start sharing your stories of what you've been up to since the last convention, as well as what you've been up to at this convention. And it's always so great to just see those con buddies. Oh, I love yeah. it. I love our con friends. As always, nerdlings, if you happen to like the video, please give it a like. Drop some comments down below on any of the things that we picked up. If you know anything about Satine or have some great stories, or if you're a Baker fan yourself, or especially if you love your Dungeons & Dragons or any other tabletop game, we love to hear about that stuff down below. Be sure to hit the notification bell and subscribe because sometimes we don't even know what <laughs> conventions we're going to end up at. So you might as well stick around so you can see where we go. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so you can show us pictures of the conventions in your town. And go over to Tee Public because we've got merchandise. And if we like it, we nerd it. All right, you go get the dice and make sure you get the dice cage in case any of them are bad. I want a freaking token cage for that game that I tried to play. <laughs> Bye, Bye nerdlings. nerdlings.